my name's Cynthia Marsh and I'm a member of the Lace Market here. I shouldn't have been a member here for about 30 odd or more years. Um, I regularly direct here and sometimes perform. This year I'm directing um, a Shakespeare. It's a Shakespeare that's not very often done. It's King John and it was chosen by the Play Selection Committee because this year, 2015, is the 800th anniversary of Magna Carta, the signing of Magna Carta between the rebellious barons of uh, 1215 and uh, King John, who was very much disliked. Um, I don't think it's a play I would have naturally chosen myself, but I was particularly interested in it because it was going to be entered for the uh, project that's being run by the Royal Shakespeare Company um, called Open Stages. Uh, and in Open Stages, they're committed to finding out what's going on at community level with regard to the presentation of Shakespeare and the exploration of, of Shakespeare. And the um, immense advantage in that for the, uh, for the Lace Market Theatre and for me was that the RSC have run over the last 18 months monthly workshops at Stratford-upon-Avon for the Midlands theatres who are involved. We were lucky enough to be chosen. We're one of uh, about 18 companies from the Midlands. And so they've run these workshops, which I've attended regularly as a director, and they've had uh, workshops especially dedicated to performers, to the tech crew, um, several of those. So um, it's been a very interesting project as far as I'm concerned. I've learned a great deal, I've discussed a great deal. Above all, I've met a lot of other of members of other amateur com companies, very like us, who are dedicated to bringing theatre to their local communities. I've worked with a fantastic designer we have here in the lace market called Mark James, and um, he, I've worked with him before, and he's a great person to be in dialogue with when you're putting a production on the stage. Hi, welcome to the uh, Lace Market Theatre. We're in the green room at the moment, just having a break. It's where we can make tea and coffee. I've uh, been working on stage tonight on the set uh, for King John, um, but just come down here for a break for the time being. Cynthia Marsh is the uh, director of King John, and she asked me if I designed uh, the set for the show. And I gladly accept it because it's always great fun working with Cynthia. Um, as the set designer, you read the script and decide uh, what's needed on stage to uh, portray the action and the scenes needed. Uh, the main uh, requisite for the set design is to have the city walls and uh, a castle represented on stage. And I didn't want to do this very blatantly. And, and also, the fact that the play is set in three different time zones, uh, modern day Elizabethan times, and going back to medieval times, um, I had to make the set um, in a way as nondescript as possible um, so that it would, wouldn't stand out in any particular way as being from a particular period. Um, so I've gone for this design with very plain wood um, and implied um, castles and battlements um, in the design. Uh, this is the main structure on stage, which represents the uh, city walls and the castle ramparts. And it goes up to a uh, height of about four feet, which doesn't sound a lot, but it looks quite impressive on stage. Uh, okay, here we are on stage um, with the set design behind us, and this is the thrust I was talking about. I'll now show you the trapdoor. during the show. So poor Arthur gets put down here. And this is how the actor escapes at the interval. What we've been doing is, is plotting the show. Um, which involves basically uh, building the cues from from the beginning, Q1 and preset, 
having a look, seeing how it looks, and then making any changes necessary. Then once that's done, once we get to the technical rehearsal on uh, Tuesday night, we'll go through the whole thing with the sound, the audio-visual, and we will then um, put in the time cues and the line cues, which means at that particular line the lighting changes or the sound changes and so on. This is on a computer which Alan is working on here. Um, he, he's actually the one who's actually um, operating, in fact building the cues. Uh, and he's, what he's got there is a cue list. Um, but what, what we'll find that though is as we get to the dress rehearsal and the first dress rehearsal on Wednesday night is there'll probably be various changes to make um, change intensity or in fact we might even have to put another a lantern up if it's if it's not right so it's that's the time after the first dress rehearsal that we'll make a lot of the changes if they are necessary um, and then we get to the second dress rehearsal on Friday uh, again any adjustments will be made then and then finally on Sunday we have the final dress rehearsal and Monday's opening night so we've got to have everything right by then our LED lights are on the site over there um, will have a particular colour on it and we, by moving our cursor all over that swatch you can get a lot of different colours there we, I know there, there's working lights on that so you can't see it very clearly but um, if you move the swatch the cursor around you then get the different colours for, for whatever you want you know, a whole range of different colours it's a bit washed out now because of the working lights are on, mm. but um, that is what you can do with LED lights. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we will. For, now the working lights are in fact um, uh, what we have on stage when we're building the set, rigging the lights and so on. It's basically yeah. just uh, floods which are on the stage. In fact, when we have to focus the lights, we, we have to take the working lights out, go to performance mode, so we can see where the light is actually, what it's hitting, and um, make adjustments, focus it, shutter it off if it's travelling too far. So, my name's Peter Hodgkinson, and I'm the head of AV and the um, head of sound here at the Lace Market Theatre. Uh, I joined the theatre um, because I work in a school in Nottingham, and um, as an IT technician. They asked me uh, to start helping out on the shows, as I knew a bit about computers. Um, but I didn't know anything about theatre. I was recommended this place to start learning a few years ago. And I have uh, been involved in an awful lot of shows, I've learned a tremendous amount, and I'm now um, teaching new members lighting, sound, AV, and how we use it here at the theatre. On King John itself, um, I've been doing a sound design for it, along with Echo Zhang, who's uh, been with us for about a year, and Oliver Lovely, who's composed the music. We've set up six speakers around the theatre to give uh, directional sound from any direction that we choose and we've programmed up the sound into a long list of cues on the laptop so that when it comes to operating the show it's just a case of pressing the space bar at the right time and everything else is taken care of. Um, it's been quite an interesting challenge because although there's only 29 music cues, um, 9 sound effects and a handful of uh, projections uh, it's ended up being programmed in as 585 cues, which sounds an awful lot more. Uh, the reason for this uh, is the complexity of how we've programmed it in. We've got uh, arrows and cannons flying backwards and forwards over the auditorium, uh, over the audience's head. Uh, quite an interesting challenge for me has been programming up a ringing of the bell uh, to go with the person pulling the rope on stage. What I didn't want it to do is sound like the exact same bell toll looped over and over and over again and I wanted it to have 
the start where it builds up the ringing and the end where it just fades away naturally. This involved quite a lot of programming as I had nine bell tolls to go in the middle. Uh, the software needed to know um, that at the end of any of those bell tolls it needed to check whether we hit spacebar again uh, to do the end or carry on looping round, which boosted up the cues an awful lot. There's been an awful lot of stuff like that. I've learnt an awful lot about the software and it's been a great fun challenge for me. Now, what have been the challenges with this production? I think particularly getting um, a cast to feel confident with the Shakespearean text that we have. A lot of it is declamatory because the, the negotiations between John and the French king are conducted in public and with high rhetoric and they spend a lot of their time disagreeing. Um, and then they make a dynastic marriage and everything seems okay. So getting people to understand and then be able to manipulate this language which is quite heavy with imagery, um, rhetoric and has the metre and rhythms of Shakespeare um, has been quite a challenge. But I think most people in the cast, if not, I think all of them, I, should, I, I can confidently say, have risen to that challenge um, superbly. comes on just as I'm told she's dead. No, that's right. We can have your costume. If stage. I go off that way, it'll be interesting. Well, we'll have it hanging on stage left. Okay. And you can do it on stage. We'll see whether it's possible for you to do it. Yeah. Okay? Is that right? That would make a very interesting moment as the actress becomes another character. Okay? All right. 
Um, well, thank you very much, everybody. Wednesday is the next one, and that's the medieval, <laughs> excuse me, the medieval part. <laughs> Market Theatre for ooh, getting on for 20 years. Um, I've done quite a few shows here, mainly acting, um, a bit of directing as well. I'm also involved in the rotors for Duty Officer. And in King John, I'm playing the character Cardinal Pandolf, who's a bit of a scheming cleric, um, quite keen on feathering his own nest, I think. I'm also a member of the ensemble, so I'm playing some of the uh, smaller non speaking roles as well. I'm looking forward to King John this week and um, hoping that a good number of people will come in and see it. That John may stand, then Arthur needs must fall. So be it, for it cannot be but so. But what have I to gain from young Arthur's fall? You, in the right of Lady Blanche, your wife, he then make all the claim that Arthur did. Oh, so you go that way. No, it's happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to follow you. He looks at Elizabeth Good. and then he follows. And you can look at the audience as well. If you okay. like. I've got him. <laughs> okay. Got him. Right. Okay. Right. So you've just come down the steps right. and then the like, light keeps okay. going. Do so you want to look at us while you go? Yeah. Go for that. Then by the Lord of powers that I have. Can I just borrow your pen out there? The man should speak these words to me. And hang the calf skin on those recreant limbs. Thou dares not say so, Philip. But I like. And hang a calf skin on those recreant limbs. We like not this, let us forget ourselves. Just cross it right in front of you. Yeah. That's one of the reasons I don't know. So, go upon my wedding day. To come back a bit, you're a bit more central, you do that. <coughs> come back, go from upon my wedding day. Upon thy wedding day, against the blood that thou hast married. Yeah, just move that way slightly. If you go to a Shakespeare play, and particularly to King John, which is very unfamiliar to modern audiences because it's rarely done, it has been popular at certain periods. In the early 19th century, Sarah Siddons, for example, um, made one of the roles, the role of Constance, very much part of her repertoire, and Macready played King John to great acclaim, but I can understand why, because the play is somewhat melodramatic. So it's, it's not the best of Shakespeare, and some of it is quite difficult to um, make intelligible. It's full of contemporary reference, as many of Shakespeare's plays are. So one of the first things I had to do was to produce an edited version of the script. And we'd had a tremendous workshop at Stratford on cutting Shakespeare. Some people think it's a crime to cut Shakespeare, but I'm not of that school because I think the worst thing you can do is keep people 
in the theatre much longer than they want to be there. So I am very prepared to run this as a two hour, two to two and a half hour show. Uh, in the workshop at Stratford on cutting, one of the exercises we had to do was to reduce one of the most famous soliloquies, that of Hamlet, uh, to be or not to be, to one word. And I won't tell you what that word is, but it created huge discussion over what it might be among the people in the workshop. But it was a terrific exercise in learning how to pick out the most meaningful words, phrases, lines in a particular speech. So I cut the text by something like a quarter. Um, and one of the, well, the criteria that um, I adopted were that if I couldn't find the meaning of parts of the text by a fair amount of assiduous research in sources, or I didn't still understand it after several readings myself, I thought I'm going to have difficulty making an un audience understand this. So that's where the knife or the blue pencil um, began to fall. Market Theatre and have been since the early 1990s. Um, during that time I've been in many productions and particularly with Cynthia Marsh. Um, I think we've worked together about a dozen times. Um, four of those occasions have been in Shakespeare. Uh, three times she's directed me, including this coming production of King John. Uh, and also we once acted together. Um, but I've done many other things as well. Um, I also do, from time to time, when I'm called upon to do it, uh, musical direction and other uh, musical activities in the theatre, uh, which I enjoy doing very much. Um, I love this place. Um, it's a second home to me, really. Um, sometimes a first home. At the moment, I'm playing the Earl of Salisbury in Shakespeare's King John. Um, we've been rehearsing for quite a number of weeks. Uh, Salisbury is a very interesting character. Uh, he's historically accurate, and although Shakespeare did not realise it, he is actually a bastard half-brother um, of King John, uh, being a, a, a son, a by-blow, as it were, of uh, Henry II. Um, he's a very emotional character, and I've enjoyed playing him a lot because of that. Um, he has some really quite intense scenes, um, emotional scenes, um, and some of the lines are really rather fine, uh, and I enjoy speaking them. Um, I haven't found it a particularly arduous role, um, because there's not a lot of jumping around. Uh, it's mostly standing and delivering the line. But on the whole, um, it's been a, a fairly easy run for me, uh, except that once the week gets going, I have to think about my knee, which I have some trouble with, so standing around on the stage for quite a long time is, is difficult for me. Um, so if people see me sitting down at inappropriate moments, it's, it's because I, I can't stand for hours on end. That's been a bit of a problem in the rehearsals as well, so I've, I've had to sit down sometimes then. Uh, I just adore doing Shakespeare here, um, and this is a very inventive production, uh, and a very rare uh, occasion 
because King John has done so little. So it's a great opportunity to do a very little known play by Shakespeare, which probably won't happen again uh, for a long time. It's not pity of our grievous friends, but we, the sons and children of this isle, were born to see so sad an hour as this, wherein we step after a stranger, march upon her gentle bosom, and fill up her enemy's rank. Now, now, you stars in your right, that move in your right, spheres. Where be your powers? Show now your mended face, and instantly return with me again to push destruction and perpetual shame from out the weak door of our fainting land. Straight, let us seek, or straight we shall be sought, that off our rages at our very heels. Tale. 
and vexing the dull ear of a drowsy man. And bitter shame hath spoiled the sweet words taste that it yields not but shame and bitterness. Before the curing of a strong disease, even in the instant of repair and health, the fit is strongest. My name's Steve Mitchell. I've been a member of the Lace Market Theatre for just over two years now. Uh, I joined just after I moved down to Nottingham. Acting is something I'd wanted to do for a while, but I'd never really had the opportunity because I'd been moving around a lot for university and work and such. Uh, the lace market was a very attractive prospect for me because it allowed people to uh, join as amateurs with very little or no experience and dabble in anything they wanted. So they could try their hand at acting if that didn't stick, move on to tech, directing, anything at all really. I'm playing the role of Louis the Dauphin in King John at the Lace Market Theatre. Uh, Louis the Dauphin is the Prince of France, the son of King Philip, who initially comes off as something of a, a lost puppy. He kind of follows his father around, does whatever his father does. Um, he comes more into his own later on after the wedding to Blanche of Spain. Uh, the Cardinal Pandulf tends to lead him on quite a lot. Uh, he's very easily led, very easily manipulated. As heartily as he is glad he hath him. <laughs> your mind is all as youthful as your blood. Now hear me speak. Um, towards the end of the play he comes more into his own, uh, gets a bit more confidence and still isn't quite sure why he's doing what he's doing but thinks that now he's on a set course he needs to follow it through. Um, whether that goes well for him or not is kind of up to the audience to decide. Cynthia Marsh, the director, has heavily edited the text. Uh, originally it was quite a, a long play. Some of it's been chopped out considerably, which hasn't actually affected the overall flow. If anything, it's sped it up quite a bit. It's one of Shakespeare's earlier works, so it doesn't have the, the quality of some of his more established plays. It's very rarely performed, so not many people are that familiar with it. Uh, it's not the first Shakespeare that I've done, I was in Twelfth Night previous year, so I'm reasonably comfortable with Shakespeare. Uh, Cynthia has directed me before in the first play I was ever in, actually, and she's very good at getting the most out of people, especially with people who maybe haven't found their voice yet. Noble temper dost thou show in this, and great affections wrestling in thy bosom doth make an earthquake of nobility. Lift up thy brow, renowned with Salisbury. And with a great heart, heave away the storm. Commend these waters to those baby eyes that never saw the giant world in rage. Thank you to come on. Yeah. Keep fighting at the back. Now clear at the back. Tr driver off, Chloe. That's it. <laughs> and she comes all the way round. That's it. As Sally wins. Let's, hey. let's have a try. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Yes. <laughs> on my leash, for very little pain shall bring this labour to an happy end. Thou art not holy to belie me so. I am not mad. This hair I tear is mine. My name is Constance. I was Geoffrey's wife. Young Arthur is my son. And he is lost. I am not mad. I'm Imogen and we're here at the Lace Market Theatre where I'm playing Lady Constance in King John as part of the RSC Open Stages project. I left school in 2013 and my aim is eventually to get into drama school and I came to the Lace Market Theatre to get more musical theatre experience because my first show here was White Christmas which was last September and um, I saw the opportunity to be involved in the RSC Open Stages project in King John, which I'd never heard of. And I thought it was a really great opportunity to get back in touch with Shakespeare, which I hadn't really done or had the opportunity to do since school. I'm really enjoying working with this company of inspiring people who have very different 
um, experiences in working and performing in theatre, um, which has been really, really interesting and a lot of fun because coming from school, I'm now one of the youngest in the cast where for a lot of the time I was, you know, in year 13 and the oldest, which is a really nice change. Performing as Lady Constance has really been a challenge and I've had lots and lots of help from Cynthia and the rest of the cast because, I mean, she's a very complicated character. She is a lot old. She could be a lot older than me because um, I'm 20 and she's been through a lot that I've, I would never have dreamed of having experience. You know, she's a widow, she's a mother. Cynthia's really been helping me with the language that Constance used because it's quite complicated, there's a lot of repetition and really using that to the best advantage of showing the audience how she really feels as a character that I feel is really, really honest and is very much alone throughout a lot of this play where it's really all about taking sides. Constance is left on her own trying to fight for what she believes is her child's right to be king and having gone to France for help she's then completely abandoned and I think everything she says from then is incredibly honest and really outspoken for a Shakespearean character. Go with me. Love. Now. Now see the issue of your peace. Peace, good lady. Comfort, gentle Constance. No. I defy all counsel, all redress, but that which ends all counsel, true redress, death, death, oh amiable, lovely death. Overall I'm really enjoying playing Lady Constance, even though it's quite a sad part and a lot does happen to her. It's really nice to bring that to life on stage and have the opportunity to do that with such an amazing cast and a great production team. Um, a particular scene of mine which I found challenging but also really exciting is when I'm walking up and down the beautifully constructed ramp that's part of our amazing set and uh, it's been a really interesting experience and Cynthia's given me a lot of one-on-one -on -one work with how I can really use the set to my advantage which you don't really get an opportunity to do a lot to really get in touch with the set and go through that privately with the director and see how you could use it before you get the other cast members in which can sometimes, especially if you're one of the youngest performers, be quite intimidating when this is the only production that you've done here that is, you know, contemporary classical theatre. I would really encourage anyone who has a desire to become a performer or would just like more performance experience, especially as a young person living in Nottingham, to so come to the Lays Market and it really is an incredible opportunity and an experience and it's right in the middle of Nottingham. And teaches me to kill or hang myself. If I were mad, I should forget my son. Or might he think a babe of clouds for he? I am not mad. Too well, too well, I feel the different plague of each calamity. So this is a very packed weekend in the schedule of running the show. We then have a tech and three dress rehearsals and then we have the first night and that will be the test of whether I've done my job and whether I've been able to get the team itself to rise to the occasion. I have every confidence in them. I think they've shown that they're a terrific um, group of people, very willing um, to work together. So directing a play, to me, and directing this one in particular, is a huge mental exercise, both in determining the kind of production you want to do, determining all the details of that production, and then carrying every part of that schedule through in the 10, 11 weeks that we put to um, rehearsal. Um, it's, uh, it's, 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 not, it's both mentally and physically um, very uh, demanding, but it's something I very much enjoy doing. And if we can produce a show that just two or three people enjoy, then that for me um, is, is enough. So I don't think I want to say any more at the moment. If you want to come see the show, please do. <laughs> Thank you very much.
I'm Shirley Chalice, I'm the stage manager for King John. Um, there's a large cast here and um, there's a lot to be considered and uh, worked out before we can actually go on. Um, this is the men's dressing room and there's an awful lot of uh, costumes here and changes to be done and the ladies' costumes similarly have a lot to changing to be done. So uh, it's, uh, it's a big undertaking. So Cynthia is the uh, director and she has um, edited the um, edition of King John very ably and um, steered all the cast in their relevant parts. She's a very experienced director. Thy bastard shall be king, that thou mayst be a queen and change the world. My bed is ever to thy son as true as thy master, thy husband. Fools! This is the very sum to this. England and Ireland, Anjou, Touraine, Maine. In right of our I do defy thee, France. Arthur of Britain. Yield thee to my hand, and out of my dear love, I'll give thee more than e'er the coward hand of France can win. Submit thee, boy. Come to thy granddad, child. Do, child. Go to his granddad, child. The injury, her injury, the beetle to her sinful. With a part. <coughs> On the conscience of the Lord, whom zeal and charity brought to the field as God's own soldier, rounded in the ear with that same purpose changer, that sly devil, that broker, he that daily great thou, he the wings of all. Commodity, the bias of the world, this broker, this board, commodity. Is no sin but to be rich. And being rich, say there is no vice but beggary.